Hello people, in this video we want to look at what Gons complex is. <clears throat> See, Gons complex is a complex of three things. There are three things in this Gons complex which will form this complex. It is seen in primary tuberculosis. It is a disease. What is tuberculosis? It's a disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. It's a bacteria. In this tuberculosis there are two types, primary and secondary. Primary means Somebody who never got infected before, first time he is getting infection, that is primary tuberculosis. Mostly it is seen in children. So this is, you have to, important word you have to remember. Mostly it is seen in children. Here, lung, usually lung is affected. But otherwise, if they have ingested the bacteria, even small intestine can get affected. Secondary tuberculosis is where the person is getting the infection for the second time. Okay. So that is what it is. So secondary means basically he is getting a reinfection. Now let us move on. So you are understanding, right? So we are talking about what today? Gons complex. So it is a lesion seen in primary tuberculosis only. So you have understood what tuberculosis is. You have understood what primary tuberculosis is. Very good. Now primary tuberculosis uh, has this Gons complex. How will you define this Gons complex? It is a lesion produced or a leon. Leon produced in the tissue of portal of entry. Wherever the bacilli has entered, at that place, in that tissue, there will be three things. A foci, a draining lymphatic vessel and lymph node. Three things are affected. Look at that here. So this is the lung. Let us say that guy inhaled this bacteria, tuberculous bacteria. So here there is a foci, the draining lymphatics and here is the lymph node to which it is reaching, correct? So from here to here. So there are three components, right? So these three components together form the Gons complex or the primary complex. So it is, what is it? How will you define it? Gons complex is the lesion produced at the portal of entry, in the tissue at the portal of entry with the foci in draining lymphatic vessel and lymph node, okay? If the person has inhaled the bacteria, then you will see this in the lung. And the lymph node that is associated will be the hilar lymph node. If the person has ingested the bacilli through food or some contamination, he got it. Then you will see the Gons complex in the small intestine. And the lymph node affected will be the mesenteric lymph node. Okay. It will be the mesenteric lymph node. So Gons complex you can see in both the places. You can see in lung or you can see in the small intestine. Most commonly the lung. Now, what are the components of Gons complex? You already know this. There are three components. Let us say if it is of the lung, then you will see a pulmonary component, right? You can see here, there's a Gons focus here and there is a lymphatic component and a hilar lymph node component, okay? So, look at the details of this Gons foci. Gons foci or Gons focus, it should be 1 to 2 centimeter solitary area. Tuberculous pneumonia will be there. Usually, the upper part of lower lobe is affected. Subplural focus. See here, Gons focus, upper part of lower lobe. Okay. Then, Coming to the lymphatic vessel component. Here in lymphatic vessel component, what will be, you can see, the lymph will contain phagocytes containing the bacilli. So basically in the lymph, you will see phagocytes that contain the bacilli. Okay. What about the lymph node component? Lymph node in this case is the hilar lymph node, right, of the Lung, in the lung, near in the pulmonary system, the hilar lymph node will be enlarged, okay? In the lymph node, when you observe under the microscope, you will see granuloma, caseous necrosis, etc. We will come to that, okay? So, did you understand the three components of Gons complex? What are the three components of Gons complex? You have the pulmonary component, the Gons focus, you have the lymphatic vessel component and the lymph node component, okay? Now, look at the microscopy here. This is a microscopic image from our lab. So you can see here that there is a caseous necrosis. This is a lymph node guys. This is a lymph node, tuberculous, uh, tuberculosis lymph node this is. You can see caseous necrosis here and also here. So this is tuberculosis, uh, tuberculosis lymph node. Okay. So let us look at the details of what exactly we have to see here. This is a granuloma, right? Now in the granuloma, in the center you will actually have these bacilli that is the mycobacterium tuberculosis will be there 
Around it, there is caseous necrosis. This is caseous necrosis, guys. Then you have the epithelioid cells. Epithelioid cells are nothing but the macrophages. Okay, epithelioid cells. These epithelioid cells, some, sometimes they join together and they form a giant cell, which is seen here. This is a giant Langhan cell. So all the epithelioids put together, some of them, they will form this giant cell, Langhan giant cell. Okay, then around all this, around all this, you will find fi uh, fibroblasts. These are fibroblasts. Okay, so you, what and all you saw? Tubical bacilli, caseous necrosis, epithelioid cells which have joined together to form a giant cell and then around all this you have the fibroblasts. So there is some fibrosis happening around this caseous necrosis. Okay. So look at the text here. What will you see in the microscopy? You will see tuberculous granuloma. You will see a granuloma. Then in the center of the granuloma, what will you see? In the center of the granuloma, you will see caseous necrosis at the center of the granuloma. And around the granuloma, you can have fibrosis and calcification. Very good. Let's move on. If it is small intestine, then what is affected? Mesenteric lymph nodes are affected. And if the mesenteric lymph nodes are enlarged, it is called as tabes mesenterica. These uh, enlarged lymph nodes can rupture and can lead to tuberculous peritonitis. Okay. So what happens if the mesenteric lymph nodes rupture, it can lead to tuberculous peritonitis. Now let's move on. Fate of primary tuberculosis. What can be the fate of primary tuberculosis? It can heal by fibrosis or calcification. It can heal. If it is of the uh, small intestine, you saw that it can lead to uh, tabes mesenterica, that is enlarged lymph nodes, mesenteric lymph nodes, which may rupture to lead to tuberculous peritonitis. This is going to be another fate of primary tuberculosis. In the lung, it can go from one lung to the other. So this will be called as the progressive primary tuberculosis it is seen in uh, immunocompromised people like aids etc this is dissemination through bronchi okay this is seen in immunocompromised example aids okay then moving on to the next point here the fate of primary tuberculosis another fate is that by hematogenous route, it can start spreading and this will lead to primary miliary tuberculosis. Miliary tuberculosis, you can see here how the lung looks, right? So that's what you can see here, right? So that is another fate of primary tuberculosis. Then you have one more last one here, last fate of primary tuberculosis, it can, what would have healed, it can get reactivated and primary tuberculosis can become secondary tuberculosis, that's all. So that's why they say for tuberculosis, if you are, uh, if you are uh, diagnosed, you should take the treatment full course without leaving any tablet. So they try to, they try to see a DOTS therapy where they can directly observe whether the person is taking the medication or not. Because tuberculosis burden is very high on our country. So that is why they had this directly observed uh, therapy, DOTS therapy and all. So now they have other ways of monitoring. So basically tuberculosis, should they should take full treatment. Okay. So that we are done with uh, Gons complex guys. Remember this diagram. You'll be very easily able to write the Gons complex in the exam. Draw this diagram also to get marks. Okay. That's all for now. Bye bye.